Oh, good yawn. She yawns so much lately. I wonder why. Is that because I'm getting more boring? <laughs> I don't know. All right, anyway, so today we're going to talk. Oops. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Rachel's studio. Today we're going to talk about five brushes you may not have heard of. There's two in here that I've never talked about on video to anybody. So I'm gonna save the two that I haven't talked about for the last part because if you watch all the way to the end of my video, that tells the algorithm that I'm an interesting artist and it made people in my family that doubt me actually start to believe in me a little bit. So that's good too. <laughs> so help me out. I need it. <laughs> I'm just kind of kidding. All right, I'm gonna talk about my scrubber first because I, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos and I love it. And just know that if you're gonna use a scrubber in your work, then you need to use really good paper. It's really important to use like a cotton paper, something that'll stand up to scrubbing cellulose. Are you leaving? Don't leave. Don't leave, I will, I will be scared. Uh, my fear of the screen will come back. <laughs> so the scrubber. There are several different sizes and kinds of scrubbers. There's stiff scrubbers and there's soft scrubbers. I prefer a stiff scrubber and specifically I like the Zen Royal and Langnickel size two stiff scrubber. And by the way, I always link all my art supplies in every single video in the description. There are affiliate links. A lot of them are affiliate links. So I get a little bit of um, change back when you use my links to buy things. This is a size two scrubber. I use it for so many different ways. I use it to erase. I use it to paint soft fur effects. I also use it when I'm painting and I get a little stiff. I use it to loosen up my painting, soften my edges or erase across a boundary and just make a disappearing edge. I use it a lot at the end of the painting after I've removed my masking to soften some of my masking marks so they don't look so stilted and stiff and harsh. Uh, this is great for softening in a painting and softening in a painting is so important. This is my octopus brush and what it is is an old crappy brush that I don't care about and I dip it in masking. I splay the bristles out like octopus legs and then let it dry. And then you can dip it again if you want it thicker or whatever. And then you can use it to create textures like grass textures or fur textures, and they look kind of random. So you won't get those stilted, even looking fur textures or whatever texture, grass texture, um, lots of different textures. Uh, these are great to paint things like that. So that's how I use it. All right, and then another brush that I have talked about some in my videos is, uh, a, this is called a rake brush or a wisp brush. Either way, you can search either way on, again, I will link these below and there's so many different wisp or rake brushes out there. There's different lengths, there's different sizes, there's small ones, there's big ones, there's ones that are distance apart. And basically what they have is like a rake type bristle composition. These are also great in landscape painting to paint trees or grass or fur, things like that, because they will make several stripes together like, like that. And you can also use them on the side of the bristles and that can also get a nice, really nice little thin line. If you like this video, please give me a like. Apparently that's really important and leave me a comment. That really helps. And anyway, I love talking to you guys. So, all right, let's do a couple that I've, I've heard, I don't, I've never talked about these in videos. Okay, so I will put the name of the person who I found this from because I have it somewhere, but I'm not organized enough to have it ready for you while I'm recording this video. <laughs> Bad me. All right, this is a cheap chip brush that you buy at the hardware store. You can buy a whole big bag of them for like 10 bucks or something. I bought these on Amazon. They were so cheap, I got 30 of them for like, I don't know, 10 or $15. So I'm gonna be sending these out to my students as part of, of the quarterly art goodies uh, mail out, so that'll be fun. But what you do is you take these, you boil them for 10 minutes and it kind of fluffs out their bristles and then you dip just, you don't dip the whole thing in water, you just dip the tip in water and then dip it in cream consistency paint and then you can paint fur textures. The bristles do kind of splay out really nicely. So um, lots of potential here for getting some really interesting textures. All right, la 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 la. This is one that has come back to me. I used to have a brush like this and then it fell apart so badly because it was so cheap and this one is so cheap too. It's a stencil brush 
and I can't wait to use this again. And what it's really good for with watercolor anyway is to do like a motion like this and you can make really cool fur or tree textures by either dotting it like this or you can brush and this the bristles are really stiff so you get a really unique brush stroke with it and it's very inexpensive this is probably like 25 cents <laughs> this is really good for getting a lot of different textures so it is a stencil brush that crafters use to do stenciling with it's great for watercolor too i love it all right everybody it is time for our favorite time in the video bonus time and as promised for today's bonus, I'm going to tell you my all time favorite brushes to work with. And those are, drum roll, silver black velvet. And silver black velvet brushes are natural brushes. And I bought my first few brushes as a set of three and I will link that exact set below. Silver black velvets are natural hair brushes. And what I like about them because they're natural hair is one, they have a really good point and two, they hold a lot of water because they're natural hair. So that means that you don't have to reload the brush over and over again throughout a painting session. You can pick up some paint and it will last for quite a long time before you have to reload your brush. So they're really great. And I learned about them on a watercolor forum and someone asked the question, what are your favorite brushes? And I would say it was pretty amazing. 60% of the people mentioned silver black velvets as their number one all-time favorite brushes. So I figured, well, these people are onto something. So I made haste and went and bought the, um, it's actually a set of three brushes. There's a three quarter oval, there's an eight round, and there is a script brush. I think it's either size one or zero. And these three brushes are pretty much all I need to paint about eight by 10 to 11 by 14 size paintings. Last time I checked, they were between $45 and $50 for three brushes. And for natural hair brushes, that's really good because I've been known to pay $80 for one brush. So I really think they're a reasonable price for what you get. And they're really great professional level brushes that will allow you to get a lot of different effects. You can splay the bristles, whereas with synthetic brushes, you can't splay the bristles so you can get fur textures and different things like that. So there's a lot more things that you can do with these brushes because you can splay the bristles or you can keep them at a really nice point. They're great for wet on wet or dry on dry. The oval three quarter brush is great as a mop brush. That's what I use as my mop brush 90% of the time, unless I'm painting a lot bigger format than an 11 by 14 or eight by 10. And now my five-year-old's yelling for me. Uh, hey boo, do you want to be in my video? Hi. Aww. Hi everybody. Anyway, thank you so much everybody for tuning in and watching this video about watercolor brushes and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> Good Aww. job.